Right now at 430, a live look at New York City, where about an hour ago, the prosecution rested its case in the hush money trial for former President Trump. This is just outside the courtroom there. So that means it's now in the hands of the defense if they wish to call witnesses. Joining us now is our chief legal analyst, Kali Froats. Kali, first off, uh, they started to call their defense witnesses, but first they had to clear the courtroom there with Judge Marchand. What happened there? There are so many moving parts with this that's happening today. Nothing about this case is normal. Let's start there. First of all, it involves the former president. So then it got kind of normal. You're calling witnesses and all that. Then this Costello guy comes in and Costello, if you're going with Seinfeld, you can expect some, you know, up and down things. Well, right there, he came in, you know, firing on a thousand percent. He already went on this kind of talking spree. He went on Fox News. He testified in front of Congress. So you already kind of figured it was going to be contentious. They brought him here to rebut exactly what Cohen said previously when he testified during his four days. And so he gets on the stand and every time the prosecutors object to a question, he makes a smirk. He says something funny. He kind of sucks his teeth. He says, geez, Judge Marshawn catches wind of him making these comments. And then he says he kind of stares him down a little bit, looks at him like, OK, you're out of order. Uh, he makes another overruling of a, um, objection and then he kind of stares at him again. Judge Marshawn takes the jury out of the room and he tears into him and says, listen, if I make a ruling, you don't make any response. That's not appropriate. You're not supposed to do this. This guy's not a rookie. He's an attorney. He's represented a number of folks before high profile folks. He understood what he's doing. So let me address a couple of things. When you are the attorney representing someone, you have to do this thing, you know, dancing for your client. Sometimes, you know, you got a losing case, but you're putting on a show to ensure that they feel like they got their money's worth and you are presenting and putting forth a good effort. The judge recognizes that happens a lot. That's what he was doing. Even though he's not representing the former president, he walked past Trump. They have a past. Trump still owes him money for Giuliani in the past that he hasn't paid. So they kind of had a tarnished relationship, but he's purely pro-Trump. And so today he was posturing for Trump. No one else, not even for the jury, not for the judge, not for the prosecutor or defense. That was solely between him and Trump. I'm standing up for you. I'm going to fight this guy that you can't talk about. And that's all that was. It was truly embarrassing, not within the legal profession at all, but to read that, to see the text messages come in and to see the judge clear the room. Rashawn has kept a cool head this whole time. He was pissed. He let him know this will not happen. Don't smirk. Don't roll, don't roll your eyes. Don't suck your teeth. I mean, he dug into him and that's not normal for a judge to do because typically they will just keep their courtroom mm -hmm. consistent. And it's always hard to imagine that uh, something is more dramatic or more bombastic than Michael Cohen taking the stand, which he still had to take the stand today. So do you think that the prosecution got what they needed out of him today? Uh, yeah, yes and no. I mean, at the end of the day, you want the last words that the jury would hear would be Michael Cohen. And so part of today was great for them because Cohen, you know, consistently upheld that Trump knew exactly what was happening. But the bad part is that you wanted the day to end on him. You would have preferred that you say, you know, Your Honor, we're done. It's been a long day. Let the jury go home. Let them sleep on hearing nothing but Cohen and then they can start tomorrow. But no, that didn't happen. They ended today hearing this, this whole process, this back and forth. When they got pushed out of the courtroom, they knew it because he was literally staring down the judge, they said, looking him dead in his eyes as he was, was talking, sucking his teeth and saying, geez, at a judge that's talking in the middle of a courtroom when the whole jury in there. That process should have never happened. And so that may have hurt the process prosecution today because you did not want to have that kind of, you know, cluster, that clown show happening in the middle of your jury. And the judge said that we're not going to have two jury trials here. We're not going to have the jury trial for this case and have a whole nother trial trying to figure out what this guy's supposed to even talk about. Let's just bring your, your witness up, let them talk and get him out of the way. That kind of disrespect can also work against the defense in that too. But also Donald Trump is rumored to be taking the stand, but that could be bluster as well. Would you advise your client to do that, especially the way things have gone so far? If I had a normal client that would listen, I would first want to advise him. And you can see that Trump is not listening to any advice of his attorneys because last week they talked about this witness taking the stand and everyone on his team was saying, listen, there's no need to call him. But you can see that Trump wanted him to take the stand. Trump was happy with his, his testimony in front of Congress. He thought he did an excellent job saying this is not um, even political warfare. This is called lawfare now. They're making up new terms. So now this is lawfare and they're using the legal system to attack the former president. Trump wanted him to say that on the stand today and find a way to get that in there. So if he's not listening to their advice to say you shouldn't call this guy, I think he's not going to listen to their advice when they tell him not to take the stand himself. Mm -hmm. I think Trump believes that I, 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 just like when he testified, I mean, I, I say campaign about him being president, that I'm the one that could fix this country. I'm the one that can, you know, make sure that we get back to America in, in charge. I believe he thinks that he 
himself is the only one that could win this case, even though technically, legally, he has no responsibility to testify at all. Another dramatic day in New York City. Kali, thank you.